start the class. Take a minute. Okay. Let me start sharing my screen. I hope you guys can see my screen now. Okay, so, so I'm on a smaller screen today, guys. I think the font size is okay, right, for all of you. Okay. So the last thing we spoke about was what did we speak about last? I think yeah, we spoke about the lifting state up, right? So I hope that was clear as well. Uh, today we'll talk about uh, the one last thing with respect to the use of acting, which is regarding timers and intervals. Okay, topic is regarding timers and intervals. So basically, uh, 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 there might be situations within your app where you want to show maybe like a countdown, you know, like 10 seconds, and 10 will become nine, eight. So basically, it's like a timer that you have in your phone or your app uh, or your uh, watch, right? So that kind of timer, if you want to build, we can do that within the React app, I mean, React component using a use effect, basically. Okay. Uh, what I basically want to do right now is, hey, good evening, Keshav. Uh, so what I want to do is basically, let's say that we have, uh, this is our app right now. Okay. And there is a countdown value. So uh, we'll count down from, let's say, uh, um, the number is 10 right now. Okay. After every second, we keep reducing the value. So there's a countdown value. Oh, so I'll tell you, uh, countdown Google. For example, if I want 10 seconds, it would happen here automatically. Countdown timer. But they have it here in Google automatically, but they don't. Okay. Let's say that I want to have a countdown timer of just like uh, maybe some 10 seconds. Like when I said, when I say start, nine eight seven six and so on so this is what we basically want to build within a react component right now i want to build a simple timer once it is a zero it's done okay that's what we're going to build right now so uh, the way we approach this is just think about um this value is changing over time right guys like this it was 10 yeah initially it keeps decrementing. It keeps going from 10 to 9 and then 8, 7, so on. So this uh, this value here, there should be a state, right? Because anything that uh, anything that changes over time must be inside a state. Now, this value, it is indeed changing over time, right? Like you had 10 before and then supposed to become 9, 8, so on. So when you have something like that, which changes over time, this has to be a state, OK? Basically, what we want to do is let's say that we have a state called as count or countdown, let's say. Now, this begins at 10, but then you have to keep decrementing it from 10 to 9, 9 to 8, and so on. Now, this state is what you have to decrement. Okay. Uh, when we load the app for the first time, we see 10 here, but then it becomes a 10 minus 1, which is 9, 9 minus 1, which is 8, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, uh, think about. Uh, Wait, let me start writing the code first of all. Let's say that I have a H3, and this will basically be the countdown value. And let's have a state here. Const countdown set countdown. Starts at 10. Okay, we want to start at 10. So I'll display that here. Like this. Right, let's have, and there'll be no button or anything because as soon as the user lands on this page, the countdown should start. Okay, there should be no button or anything. We'll do that also. But the first example is basically without any button. As soon as you land on the page, you want to start the countdown. Uh, let's run this app. So npm run dev. It's currently showing the countdown of 10. Okay, but we want to keep decrementing it. So what we have to do is. Uh, Let's create a use effect. Now think about like this countdown thing, guys. Uh, this can be handled by which function do you think? Just think about a countdown. So basically, every second you want to change the state. Okay, basically think about it like this. Every second you want to, you want to perform some action. 
okay in javascript there is a function right which basically runs after every second it keeps running after every second right so yeah so that is the the set interval right there is a function in javascript called a set interval this comes by default in javascript itself okay the way it works is within set interval you pass a callback function and you tell after how many seconds it should be called every single time what this means is if you type let's say i am called okay uh what happens is see we keep printing i am called after every one second like this okay so a set interval is after uh, this fixed interval this function will keep getting called which means that first we'll call this function uh then after after one second we call this function again after one second we call this function again and that's how this basically works okay does this make sense guys what set interval is basically used for ha huh. now uh, uh, we have one more function here called a set timeout this also you guys must be knowing what is basically set timeout is after a specific timeout you run this function once that's it but don't run it initially okay like after a specific amount of time that is when you run uh, this function i am called so after one second we we'll see i am called here now if you change this to let's say some 5 seconds uh, then after 5 seconds you'll see it being called like this so this is the difference between set timeout and set interval set interval is a function is called every Uh, uh, these many milliseconds, uh, but what set timeout does is it calls this function only once after these many milliseconds. That's it. Uh, after five seconds, this function is called. That is set timeout, and set interval is basically it's it'll run a function after every these many milliseconds. Okay. Now one important thing to note here is let's say that we have our set interval. if i say i am called and i run it after 1000 or milliseconds so uh, what's happening here guys is after every 1000 milliseconds we call this right the thing is what if mujhe beech mein is interval ko stop karna hai okay uh, now think about like stopwatch the stopwatch is there in google by default ha aur ye bhi timer bhi tha google pe theek hai so on stopwatch right uh, when i started see keep going 1 second 2 second 3 second so basically the timer has begun here right like after every 1 second this value is getting updated to the next value but how do i stop this i have a stop button right here theek okay? hai when i click on the stop button here the interval was stopped okay interval y par ruk gaya ab uske liye what we do is we have a function called as clear interval okay what the clear interval ka function will take is it will take whatever was returned by this interval so yeah you have to tell this function this clear interval function which interval to clear right because see uh, there might be multiple other intervals here like this okay but the clear interval needs to know which interval to stop it not stop all everything at once by default guys it will only stop whichever interval you give it here now what happens is see every interval that you have it returns to you an id an interval id basically let me remove this okay and, and let me add a console log here of the interval id yeah so interval id is 3 this time okay so basically the set interval returns to you a number okay which you can store within a variable and this variable is what you give within uh, the clear interval here and that's it now it stopped so basically what's happening is i'm clearing the i mean i'm setting the interval but i mean but i'm immediately clearing it which means that it never actually runs now what i'll do is let's say that i want to run for a few seconds but after let's say after 5 seconds i want to clear it off so i'll use a set timeout for that so after 5 seconds see it'll first start running i am called i am called i am called i am called but after 5 seconds 
it just stops because i'm saying that after 5 seconds i want to clear the interval which means that this interval will run for the first 5 seconds but once we reach the 5 seconds once the 5 seconds has passed the set timeout will just clear of this interval does this make sense guys theek okay. hai now interval uh, whenever you have an interval na most of the times you have to make sure that you clear the interval at some point it just keep this in mind because you'll be using that in react right now but one more important thing here uh, regarding the set time out is we just like set interval na the set time out also basically has it also returns to an id let's say i am called so this also returns a timeout id now again uh, this name can be obviously whatever you want guys because variable names there are no rules i mean there are some rules but you can add whatever you want here it can be something uh, this also obviously add a meaningful name because this is a timeout and this set timeout returns to you a timeout id let's call this timeout id here okay now when i console log this it returns to you one which is the id of this uh, of this timeout okay after 3 seconds this gets printed now we uh, just like how we have a clear interval na we also have a clear timeout ka function now honestly speaking like clear timeout is not used that much i'll tell you why uh, because set timeout jo hai wo to ek hi bar call hoga na wo ek hi bar call hoga so it's not called again and again it's not like an interval which keeps getting called again and again that is why the the clear timeout honestly is not used that much but i'll tell you still when you can use it okay let's say that maine ek timeout maine chalu kar diya theek hai for this means after 3 seconds this will run right but let's say that beach mein kuch action hua and within those three uh, within those 3 seconds i i decide not to call this uh, not to call the timeout in such a case i can clear the timeout okay what i mean is let's say that a uh, mini a time out ko shuru kiya bhi at this point a time out started okay let's say that uh, like this is the 3 second ka time like agar yahan par aa gaya to it will fire okay let's say that it started right now it's going 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 once it goes to 3 seconds it'll fire the call back that is what set time out is right set time out once we start the time out and until it reaches this point it won't call but once it reaches the point once it touches the 3 second mark then it will fire off the call back which is this call back here okay guys example uh, is it understood this example okay but let's say that a uh, minute time out have start kiya it's going maybe i've reached 1 second uh, i've reached 2 second lekin before i reach the 3 second mark i somehow want to cancel this one but just to cancel karna hai and to cancel this is what you can use the set the set time out for i mean the clear time out sorry theek hai let's say that i decide that uh, i'll create one more set time out but this one will only be for 2 seconds and i decide to clear the time out for this time out id now see this will never get called okay because ye 3 second tak jaane se pehle i have cleared the time out theek hai yes that is all there is to this so just understand what is uh, what is set time out what is set interval <coughs> also understand id thing for time out variable is not clear theek hai uh Have you understood what the ID for the uh, ID for the set interval thing does? Okay, I'll talk about that also. Let's say that we have a set interval. Okay, so what does the set interval do first of all, Trinay? What does it actually do? Ha. So basically, see, after interval, मतलब does it call only once or does it keep calling it? 
it keeps calling right so let's say that i want to run a function after every 1 second so i want to run this function like this function will run after every 1 second and it'll never stop okay right now there is no way to stop this interval it's basically like doing this if i go to google right if i start um uh, if i start my my stopwatch see it goes from 0 to 1 to 2 3 and imagine there was no button here there was no buttons here it'll keep on going no that's exactly what is happening uh, right now here so if i add like a console log if i say that uh, timer on going see after every second this timer on going will just keep getting called like this it never stops but obviously like when you have a timer you would want to stop it at some time right for whatever reason let's say maybe you're trying to uh, count are you trying to count uh, who runs the fastest or whatever like a lap race okay and the first person has come i want to stop the interval when i click on stop what exactly happened the interval has stopped right Hmm? You understood the use case of why we want to stop uh, the the timer, right? Uh, obviously, when you have a timer starting, you would obviously want to stop it at some point of time based on certain event. Okay, so the event can be whatever, but the point here is uh, we want to stop this interval after a certain amount of time. Now, uh, <clears throat> the question is how to stop the how to stop the interval. okay uh, there is a function called as clear interval now just like set interval is provided by the javascript kind of as itself this also is provided by javascript itself we don't have to download or anything it's not part of any of the library it's part of the javascript like browser api itself okay now this clear interval you have to provide it yeah i mean you have to tell this clear interval which interval to clear it off like which interval should i stop if you don't tell it it will not stop anything okay which means that uh, it contains a mandatory argument here which is you tell it you tell the clear interval ka function which interval to stop okay the way you tell it is whenever you call a set interval right so this is basically a function right you're calling a function basically and a function can return some value now this set interval ka function basically returns to you an id value okay so if i just console log the id sorry so it's saying 3 so what this means to see the browser is assigning an id of 3 to this specific interval okay this id uniquely identifies what this interval is let's give it a uh, name of timer uh, id 1 okay Let's create one more uh, one more set interval now. So I'll create set interval with the value of two. This will go for every two seconds. Now I'll console log this timer id two. And this time it gives me back a value of four. What is timer id one? Let's see. Basically, we have timer id one is six. And time error two is seven. And yes, you are right, Rene. Uh, the browser will allocate these unique IDs for every single interval. We don't do it. We only access the value. That's it. We don't we don't create them at our end. The browser does it at at, at its end. Okay. So now, Vishal, the ID ka value is going to be a number, but the number can be anything. We don't know and we don't care as well. Our job is to simply take that number. and give it to clear interval that is all we need to do we don't care what it basically is it's like the swiggy delivery guy he doesn't know what is there inside the delivery package right wo restaurant ko jata hai he goes to the restaurant and takes the order and gives to the customer that's it we do the same exact thing we don't care what is there inside that our job is done theek okay, hai so once we have created a couple of intervals here and of course every interval has its own id we can tell the clear interval which interval i want to stop right now right now both the intervals are going on right and this will run every 1 second and this will run every 2 seconds 
but i want to stop let's say the first interval the way i stop the first interval is you tell the clear interval to stop this one okay what this does is it simply stops this interval from ever running again it will just stop it like now like whatever we did uh, whatever we did with the stop button now see it's running right now when i click on stop we have stopped the uh, stop the interval that's exactly what is happening here also we are stopping the interval at that point of time okay now let's go back to this so uh, is it clear till now after nine okay ganesh yes there is and we i have an app also to show you the, uh, to show you how to do how we can do it today okay we'll be looking at that okay so ha huh, to uh, see what is happening right now na we don't see even we don't see even like one uh, one console log happen what is the reason for that because what is happening here is see i've set up an interval i got the id now before we reach the one second mark i'm clearing the interval which means that ye shuru hone se pehle hi like it's getting stopped that's why we don't see anything here okay but what i want to do is let it keep running but after 5 seconds i want to stop the interval okay the question is after 5 seconds stop the interval basically what that means is after 5 seconds i want to run some function and for that what can we do we can use set timeout right so basically what i'll do right now is i'll use a set timeout and here after 5 seconds i want to stop the interval which means that at the first 5 seconds it will run happily 1 2 3 4 5 after 5 seconds is done we clear the interval and it doesn't run anymore now does it make sense running okay don't hesitate to ask again if you are still unclear no problem ha uh, so this is uh, this one guys is basically wait let me add this to github just as if you want me to add something to github this with a forget just remind me okay i'll keep adding it okay so this is what the set interval ka clear interval does now what i was saying is what if you have a set time out and it basically is supposed to run this function after 3 seconds i want to run this function function called okay so basically like this function uh will get called after 3 seconds and it got call right less uh, now just like set interval a set timeout also returns to you an id now this id just like the set timeout id is also assigned like uniquely by the browser we don't care what the id is we we never care about it we simply use the id that's it vishal is asking sir ye totally uh, rog de raha hai but usko same wahi se start karna ho stop for js हाँ तो वही करने वाले हैं विशाल हम लोग डू इट इन रिएक्ट ओके आई एम टीचिंग यू द बेसिक्स ऑफ दीज थिंग्स फर्स्ट बिफोर डाइविंग इनटू द एप ओके सो बेसिकली आई हैव लाइक टू डिफरेंट एप्स आई वांट टू डू वन इज अ टाइमर व्हिच गोस फ्रॉम अ बिग नंबर टू अ स्मॉल नंबर वन मोर द स्टॉप वॉच विल बिल्डिंग बोथ ऑफ देखे बेसिकली विल बी बिल्डिंग Uh, we'll be building both this as well as this okay we nahi uska ho gaya nahi like this is calling the function only wait i'm uh, looking getting confused hold on see i am calling the set interval now this function will be called by 
Okay, Vinny, what exactly is the question? Are you saying that I should be doing this? Is it what you're saying? No, we should not be doing this. See, that's what I'm saying now. So a set interval will return an ID. When you call, uh, whenever you create an interval like this, the browser creates an ID for the set interval. Like for this particular, like this particular instance creates an ID. That is what is being returned here, not the function itself. और ये जो भी फंक्शन है ये हम कभी कॉल नहीं करते ना ये आफ्टर दीज मेनी मिली सेकेंड दिस फंक्शन इज कॉल्ड ऑटोमेटिकली बाय द ब्राउजर राइट एवरी सिंगल टाइम वी नेवर कॉल इट इट जस्ट कीप्स गेटिंग कॉल्ड ऑटोमेटिकली बाय द ब्राउजर ठीक है सुन दिस इज जस्ट द आई डी दैट इज असाइन टू दिस सेट इंटरवेल दैट्स इट ओके Let's, uh, yeah. So, like I was saying, just like a set interval, a set timeout also returns to us an ID, which is uniquely assigned to it by the browser. A function called. I want to run this after three thousand three thousand milliseconds, and this also returns to us an ID. On timeout ID. Okay. Now, <clears throat> why do you need the timeout ID for? Because let's say that once you register this timeout now, let's say for some reason you want to cancel this timeout before the three seconds has passed. Like before this happens, I want to cancel it. And that's what Ankit, your right name can be anything. That's what I've uh, so I've been telling here, right? So let's say that uh, that uh, we have uh, this is. Wait, hold on. क्या हुआ? I have a straight line. Uh, this is zero seconds, and this is like one second. This is two. And this is three. Let's say. Let's uh, set this correctly. Okay. Yeah, like this. Now what happens is, let's say the timer has begun. Okay. जब timer start होता है, तो we start from here, right? It keeps going. And let's say that see, right now the timer is waiting for three uh, for three thousand. Uh, Many seconds. Basically, I'll write the code. What this means is, now right now we start at zero seconds. We're going, going, going. We're going for the first second, for 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 two seconds, and once the three seconds is reached, now that's when we log this uh, this function, right? That's what basically happens with set timeout. But let's say that. Uh, <clears throat> the time out began you keep going you keep going and before it reaches the actual destination i want to cancel the time out i want to cancel this that is definitely possible by using the clear time out just like how we have the clear interval we have clear time out as well now clear time out also just like clear interval takes the id of of the of the time out now because of this this will never run na Because this will actually run immediately after you have set up this timeout. Got it? This will never run. But let's say that I want to do a set timeout. Now this uh, this set timeout will run after four thousand milliseconds, and I'll do it like this. This time will this run? It will run because. इसका टाइम आउट विल गो टू थ्री थाउजेंड सेकेंड्स थ्री और मिली सेकेंड्स लेकिन ये फोर सेकेंड्स के बाद इसको क्लियर आउट कर रहा है लेकिन फोर सेकेंड्स तक तो ये रन हो चुका होगा ना दैट्स व्हाट है बट इफ आई रेड्यूस दिस टू लेट्स से टू थाउजेंड मिली सेकेंड्स दिस केस विल दिस रन इट वोट रन बिकॉज बिफोर इट रीच इज द्री सेकेंड मार्क वी आर वी आर क्लियरिंग ऑफ द टाइम आउट ऑफ दिस वन Now I'll ask you a trick question, okay? Uh, let's say that this is a time out ID one, two, and this is one. Let's say uh, this is taking one. I'll create one more set time out, which will run at one second, and this will clear the time out ID two. What do you think will actually happen? 
will any console log print or not but actually it does print why does it print let's walk through the code okay abhi pehle we have set up this timeout okay abhi ye 3 seconds ka start ho gaya hai and within this we are saying that ye 2 seconds par hi isko clear out kar dena hai which means that before this reaches 3 seconds when this is at the 2 second mark we have to clear this out lekin look at what i've done here i'm saying ki before this uh, before this thing runs before this function is run me i'm clearing out this time out it's like there is a meme right there is actually a meme where i'll tell you uh, church multiple men gun i have to add very uh, yeah exactly see this thing you see this meme person of interest yeah so it's like this basically like this was the first time out this guy was trying to kill him lekin this guy has killed him before this guy could kill him because of which this would actually run instagram pe time spend karta hu <clears throat> every now and then so that's how i know this kind of memes but they are only good memes okay so this is a good meme i feel but anyway, i ho- i hope you understood what's happening here guys like before this could run we have cleared off this because of this function here okay ye 2 seconds ke baad isko clear out karega na lekin ye 1 second ke baad hi we are clearing out this entire interval because of which this will never get cleared okay in fact this question i mean this uh, this thing i just thought of and i'm really proud of it i want to use it for other batches also never tricky uh i'm out stuff let's give a meme reference also here it's always good to have the meme reference the friends is this all right so <clears throat> you know why i love google like i typed something as as weird as this like church multiple men gun and still gave me the correct meme see i didn't even tell it meme but it still gave me the correct meme right so it's so clever google is i love google theek hai या सो गाइस आई होप दैट आपने ये क्वेश्चन इंटरव्यू में पूछा और कैंडिडेट आपको ये मीम दिखा रहा है हां सो आई विल आई विल रिजेक्ट हिम राइट देन एंड देयर बिकॉज़ ही कांट यूज माय मीम ऑन माय सेल्फ ओके ही कांट डू रिवर्स यू नो ऑन मी एक्चुअली आई एम किडिंग एक्चुअली आई थिंक आई वुड हायर हिम मोस्ट प्रोबेबली बिकॉज़ अगर उसको मीम पता है तो इट इट मस्ट बी वन ऑफ न्यूटन स्टूडेंट्स ओनली Only one of you guys only. So I'll obviously I'll, I'll not desert you guys now. Okay. Yeah. So this was all about uh, the set time order, set interval, guys. But let's move on to the real stuff, which is the React stuff right now. So how do we use this in React? Uh, the first thing I want to basically build out is this app. It is basically the timer. Okay. Let's say that I want to st- I want like ten seconds ka timer laga raha hu. and i click on start it goes from 10 to 9 8 it keeps going until we uh, we hit zero which is like this once it zero it's done okay i will build out this one right now so like i said like we want this this is the uh, data which will keep changing over time na which means that this should be st- uh, this should be a state which we have already done here Now think about this, guys. Like, which one should I use to achieve this? Like, should I use a set interval or should I use a set state?
Hmm. Yeah, actual answer is we can actually use both. Okay. Uh, let's try both of them. Let's try to use the set interval first. Okay. So set interval, the way we'll use it is within the see on the mount of the component. I don't I want to create the interval only once. Because see, think about it. Uh, set interval jo hai, wo ek bar create kya to bas hai na? Because we'll just keep running. You create the interval once, it'll just keep running only. You don't have to like call it or something again and again. Because the interval is something like you create the interval once, it'll keep running until you stop it, correct? Yeah, so we'll which means that we don't have to like we have to create only once during the first render, right? So let's use a set interval. Within this, huh. I want to run something after every one second. And within this, what should I be doing, guys? I need to like change my state from 10 to 9, 9 to 8, and so on. So what should be the code here? What should be my state update logic? State update logic. After every one second, I need to like reduce my count by one, right? So how do I do that? Guys, I'm so happy. Everybody is right. Uh, and you guys are right because we are basically see the new state depends on the previous state. Now I'll tell you here also why the callback is the perfect way to go. Let's first add uh, logic without using the callback. Okay. What if I never told you about the callback? You would do something like this. You would just count down of countdown minus one. You would do something like this, right? Let's see what the issue with this is. And uh, see, once I refresh the app, right? It goes from 10 to 9 and stops right there. It just doesn't go any further. Why is that? The reason being, again, if you see here, guys, this set countdown, jo hai, this, this has a closure over this variable. Abhi, exactly what is happening is, see, in the first render, when, uh, when the app is rendered for the first time, which means the app is called, which means that we create the state. And the countdown value is what right now? It's 10 right now. Okay? And we don't run this use effect yet because the render is not over yet. We come here, we render this. The countdown is, uh, is 10 right now. And then you come here. No? You come here and you start the set interval. Now, set interval is a web API, right? It's a web API, which means that it won't run on the call stack. It will go out of the call stack. It will go and go to the web API. Now, when it goes to the web API, basically, it keeps calling this function. But see, at the time this function was created, what was the countdown ka value? It was 10. The countdown ka value was 10 because this was created for the first time in the first render. Or its first render, the countdown ka value 10. Tha. The value is 10 right now. So we do 10 minus 1, we get 9 because of which we re-render the component. This time the countdown is 9 and we don't run the use effect anymore. We come here, it becomes 9. But the, uh, but the interval is still there. Na? But interval me kya hoga ki the interval, I mean, this function, it still has a closure over this countdown value which is of 10 only because initial render major countdown ka value tha this function has a closure over that countdown ka value it's a value of 10 so it will do 10 minus 1 9 right so because of that the countdown value will just never go down below 9 because it's always uh, this function it has a closure over this variable in the first render. Guess is it clear? Or do you want me to explain again? Or 
awesome if it's clear i'm very happy so i'll say ki this won't work as a keshav so the way react works now abhi ye bar bar render bhi nahi hoga like it will what react sees is in fact let me put an inspect i'll go to console and let me add a console log here just to show you how many times it will re-render see for the first time it will render once render twice and that's it it won't render again even though even though this function is getting called again and again what react checks okay so see react <clears throat> uh, react saw the value of 10 first wait a minute so a value of 10 first and then became 9 okay first render mein 10 tha second mein 9 tha lekin uske baad bar bar 9 hi aa raha hai right react kya karega it will render the first two times but like a third the third time also is the same value as the previous it'll stop it won't re-render again if you get one more nine it won't re-render you get one more nine it won't re-render so right now that's what is happening right now we are calling the interval function again and again but react has seen that okay me uh, already do bar wahi value update kar chuka hu so i'm not going to re-render again that's what react you know this is can uh, this kind of an uh, advanced topic but this good to know now you not need a you not need a dependency here okay the simple the simple way let's say this one because of closure yeah when i asked you initially how to read the logic you all were correct because the new state depends on the previous state you take the previous state and you do previous state minus 1 as simple as that that is all you need now what happens is if you check the app first of all it works perfectly fine 10 9 8 see okay exactly what we want by the way obviously it's going below zero also because we didn't have the condition that we have to stop at zero like in wo baad mein karenge but the point here is why does this work this works because let's see again in the initial render the countdown value is 10 we don't run use effect yet we come here we render this and then we come and we set up this interval right now this this interval it doesn't have any closure here it is not closing over this value at all it just has this function okay so what happens is after the first render jab bhi 1000 seconds ka mark complete hota hai then react always knows what is the previous state na the previous state is 10 so 10 minus 1 hota hai it becomes 9 we re-render with 9 and then after 1000 milliseconds again react knows again exactly what the previous state is it remembers the previous uh, in the previous state na in the previous render wahan par kya tha 9 ho gaya abhi so 9 minus 1 becomes 8 we re-render fir se after 1000 milliseconds again react will call this react knows exactly what the previous state is okay it is 7 or 8 whatever so, so it becomes 7 and so on and so on when you basically use this guys react will make sure that it always passes the correct previous state here okay is this clear guys ha so countdown this is initial state but we keep reducing it with the help of this guys this might seem tricky so please ask me if you have any questions if it's not just say clear if you have no question just say clear okay so it's clear for most of them but vinay has a small confusion uh, let me clarify vinay so what exactly is happening is see in the first render the countdown ka value is what it is 10 okay which means we come here uh, we run this line the countdown value is 10 uh, we don't run the use effect yet okay we don't run this yet because use effect always runs after the render right 
which means we come here, we render this. ठीक है एंड देन वी कम टू द यूज इफेक्ट ना यूज इफेक्ट में दिस दिस इफेक्ट रन ओनली वंस आफ्टर द फर्स्ट टेंडर एंड वी आर सेटिंग अप एन इंटरवल वी आर सेटिंग अप दिस इंटरवल एंड वॉट दिस मीन्स इज दिस सेट काउंट डाउन आई मीन दिस फंक्शन विल बेसिकली रन आफ्टर एवरी थाउजेंड मिली सेकेंड्स अभी फर्स्ट टेंडर हो चुका है काउंट एंड वैल्यूज टेन And after one second, this function will be called. And because we're using callback form, React will will basically pass whatever the current or most up to date uh, value of the countdown is. Okay. After the first render, what is the most up to date value of countdown? After the first render. It is ten. Okay, so we get ten here. We get ten minus one, which becomes nine. Okay, and as soon as you do this now, the component will re-render, and we see nine here. Okay, and then after thousand milliseconds again, we again call this function, which means we again set the state. But when you come here again, React remembers that what was the previous state. the previous state was what it is 9 no <clears throat> we get 9 here it becomes 9 minus 1 becomes 8 now react again remembers this okay because of this again react will re-render uh, we see 8 here and after 1000 milliseconds again remember the interval will never stop it doesn't matter what you give here the interval will never stop because once you set the interval The set interval will keep calling this function after these many milliseconds every single time, right? That's why after the value is eight, we show eight here. Again, after thousand milliseconds, we call this function, and we call the set state here. And the previous state is what? It is eight, because React always remembers if you give the callback form. Okay, so we get eight here. This is eight, becomes eight minus one, becomes seven. Again, a re-render. So app will re-render. Countdown is seven, so we see seven here. And then again, what happens after the thousand milliseconds? We run this function again, which means that we come here. And what is the previous state right now? It is seven. So again, seven minus one, six. So that is what will keep happening. Yes, because Vinay, if you look at this now. The problem with this is the set interval. This uh, this pura function will be removed out of the call stack. It will go to the web API. Think about the uh, event loop. Us web API me this function is referring to this countdown value, which was there in the first render. Okay, this thing. Is referencing to the countdown value of the first render, which was ten. Which means that we keep doing ten minus one, ten minus one, ten minus one, ten minus one. That's all. That is what will keep happening, again and again. That is the issue here. Okay. Just to keep it very simple, always use this form, guys. Whenever you have, and that is why I said, okay, the simple thumb rule is, whenever you have a new state, which depends on the previous state. just use a callback form okay now is it clear vinay awesome agar a set set countdown ka time increase kar to rendering par farak padega kya the rendering it's a very small component so it won't really affect much ankit okay now guys one thing we have to add right now as you can see the app is going to minus okay we are we have to stop at zero na so <clears throat> first ask yourself uh, if i want to stop an interval what is the only way i have to use clear interval theek okay? hai which means that i have to i have to call the clear interval somewhere within this place i have to call the see if i can't call clear interval here it's not possible because 
this thing will run only once and this might not have the latest state so the best way is uh, see yahan par we'll always know what the current count is now if i do if i do console log of countdown here see, i'll know what the current countdown is uh, let's check I'll, i'll refresh the app see i'll check my console see i know what the current countdown is 3 2 1 and 0 so when the countdown reaches 0 which means like yahan par you have to write a condition when the countdown reaches 0 and to clear the interval make sense when the countdown reaches 0 i have to clear the interval but how do i clear the interval when i don't know what the value is now the question is how do we get the value of this of the set interval how do i get the id of this interval it's a very simple technique okay <clears throat> we obviously cannot create a variable here na because when you create a variable here guys and if you say that the interval id is this and if you use this this will definitely not work why it won't work because every single time the component uh, re-renders we recreate this variable na so obviously this won't work the simple way is just move this to top move, move this variable outside the component like this i will tell you one interesting thing about this technique here okay when react will load this component for the first time the react will run this entire file only once okay ye pura file jo hai ye sirf ek hi bar run hoga which means that this interval id just create uh, this variable here it gets <clears throat> made only once but whatever you have within the app component here this can get called multiple times right because this is a component okay so a component can always get called multiple times that's why you never create a normal variable here because it'll keep getting you know destroyed and recreated but if you create this here na the entire file will be called only once which means that this will never get uh, destroyed okay this variable will be created here once and we can use the same thing here like this now this will definitely work because this variable here it gets created only once and you want the result of this to be stored in this variable and when the countdown reaches 0 just clear the interval as simple as that let's see how this works so if i try to re uh, reload 9 8 that's it just stopped once we hit zero what happened we cleared the interval we are not we are making sure this interval doesn't run anymore okay so just remember one thing whenever you have an interval the only way to clear the interval is by using the clear interval here and let me tell you one thing guys let's say that you have a child component okay and the child component if it has the interval okay and even after the child component is unmounted the interval will still keep running remember the only way you can stop an interval from running is by using clear interval not by unmounting the component yeah we can do the same thing amit uh, doing this i'll refresh so 10 9 8 7 and stops that's it okay guys does it make sense this uh in this thing does it make sense abdur wahan par aayenge oh will come will come there okay so i will save this Uh, let's see 
now let's do the same thing with the help of set timeout okay it is possible to use set timeout as well but the code will be a little different so let's go back let's remove all of this we don't need this or this now what i want to do is again uh, so here now uh, so after the 1000 milliseconds have passed after 1000 milliseconds have passed i basically want to change the countdown value i want to reduce it from uh, from what the previous value was minus 1 so i'll take the previous state and i'll check previous state minus 1 so i'll do this now what this will do now so on the mount of the component after 1000 milliseconds we simply reduce it from 10 to 1 but will it run this again will set them out run it again i mean if you look at the app I'll refresh, so we go from ten to nine. That's it, because set time out. क्या करता है कि it only runs this only once. But what I want to do is, if you basically add the countdown here, na. Now what do you think will happen? Let's see. The app is rendered for the first time. Now we create a countdown value of uh, of ten. Okay, the value is ten right now. The countdown value is ten right now. Uh, we don't run this effect yet. we come here and the countdown here is what it is 10 now after the first render is over we come here and this function will run and what happens is we we set a set time out okay we register a set time out and after 1000 milliseconds we run this so after 1 second we run this the value will change to what Nine, because of this, the component gets re-rendered, right? When it gets re-rendered, this time the countdown value is what? It is nine. Okay, and then we come down. We don't run the use effect yet. We come down here. The countdown value is nine right now. And then again we come here. Now, will this effect run or not? That depends on the dependency, right? Now, what was the previous countdown? The previous countdown was ten. Now it's become nine. It means that the value has changed. When the value changes, we run this use effect, na. Which means we come back here. We run this function again after thousand milliseconds. Again, this value will change from nine to eight. because of this again what happens we re-render the component when we re-render the value is what right now it becomes 8 we come down we don't run the use effect yet we come down here the countdown is 8 again we come here now use effect will check what is the current countdown what was the previous count and the previous countdown was 9 as you can see now it's 8 means the value has definitely changed because it has changed it will run this effect and now what happens it will again create a new timeout and after 1000 milliseconds it will run this thing and the previous value was 8 it becomes what it becomes value of 7 That's how it basically works. It gone. Okay, now it'll become nine, eight, seven, six, five. It keeps going. Okay, so it's actually working. But again, the same problem. Below zero, so it'll keep going. But before we tackle that problem, is this understood, guys? Why this works? understood okay now to solve the issue see uh, when we basically reach zero we don't have to run this again <clears throat> let's say that see okay right now we were seven na asi chala ja raha finally we reach a point where the current value will be uh, will be let's say <clears throat> zero and previously it was one okay we come here now when it is zero do i need to uh, register a new timeout again 
no right so what should i be doing right now uh, i'll add a simple if condition na huh? it'll basically be if the countdown is not equal to 0 only then you register the new new timeout that's all i'm saying so finally when the countdown comes to 0 and the previous value was 1 uh, this effect will still run but within the effect i'm checking if the countdown is 0 i mean the countdown is not 0 अगर काउंटडाउन नॉट जीरो है ओनली रन दिस इफ द काउंटडाउन इज जीरो डोंट क्रिएट न्यू सर टाइम ऑफ दैट्स इट नाउ इफ यू चेक द एप आई रिफ्रेश वी शुड सी इट स्टॉप एल जीरो दैट्स इट Vinay, that's probably happening because you're saving the file too often. Just don't save the file and just like refresh the app and check. It'll work fine. So I'll refresh and see how normally it's working. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Nothing wrong in this. It's absolutely fine. Okay, guys. Before we take a break, any question or you guys have? Set down previous state. But see, <clears throat> Abdur, that might work. But why do you even want to create the set mode in the first place? What does set mode mean? To create? करना ही नहीं है if the value is zero. Okay. Also, in your case, you still you still calling set countdown. I don't even want to call set countdown if the value is zero. So always be smart about like when to call a set state calls. Okay. or don't even call a set state if it's not required even if it's possible to solve it your way don't do it because you don't want to call a set state uh set state unnecessarily right okay guys any questions on this i hope you guys are really understanding theek okay. hai Once you guys are back from break, I will uh, talk about the uh, next two apps. I'm um, next app, which is uh, a stopwatch app. We have done this so far. We'll create this now. Okay, we'll have a start and stop buttons, which will just keep doing this, and that also will do it both using set timeout and set interval. Okay, it'll give you a perfect understanding of how both of them work, and that will cover a lot of scenarios for you guys. Okay. Okay, so then I'll take a break. Um, can we call clear time out at town zero? Will stop. Uh, <clears throat> it will stop, Shubhash. Yes. But see, uh, whenever possible, to write logic within use effect, write logic within use effect like this. Because, like, if you look at this code now, the entire code for set time out is just within this one place. It's not scattered across. That's why just use this is what I would recommend. But yeah, what you're saying also is possible. Okay. But uh, forgot to mention. Let's take a break. It's ten ten. Let's meet at ten uh, twenty. Okay. See you at ten twenty.
I guess I'm back. Let's continue the class. Cool. So next thing we're going to build, like I said, here's a stopwatch. Uh, moving it to this. We're going to build this. Let's do it quickly. So what I want is, I'll remove all of this. This can still be counted on, but this time we'll start from zero, right? Because the value will be zero initially, and that's when we keep incrementing it. So the value will start from zero. And when we have two, we should have two buttons right now. Let's create those two buttons. Let's say the, uh, the first button will just be like start. The second one will be stop. Not stop. stop. This great. So it looks good. Uh, let's say that I remove this countdown ka value. Because let's have it like this. So it looks like this currently. And now uh, we'll create a couple of functions. We'll say const start is what will happen when we click on the button, start. And if we click on const stop, but this function will happen when we click on the stop button. So we'll add the on click for start and on click for stop. Okay. Now think about this, when I click on start, right, I basically want to keep incrementing this from zero to one, one to two, three to four. Uh, when something like that is there, right? So like, what is a better use case? Again, in the first example also, we used uh, a set interval, right? Because interval is something which just keep on incrementing once you start it, it never stop, right? Yes, are you there? Okay. We'll do the same thing here. Basically, I'll create an interval. So the way we should do it is when we click on this button, we should start a, an interval, which will keep going, which will keep incrementing the value from zero to so on, whatever it is. Uh, let's do that here. I'll say key, when I click on the button start, I'll start off an interval like this, which will go for every thousand milliseconds. I simply want to increment the countdown value. Now again, since the, the new state depends on the previous state, I'll use the callback form. So I'll say prev state will simply return prev state plus one. As simple as this. So whenever you click on the start button this time, we start an interval. And after every one second, we keep on incrementing the previous state. So if it is like zero, it goes one and then two and then three and so on. Okay, we simply have to register it just once, guys. That's it. So now, if you check, we click on start. Wait, I'll have to refresh. We click on start. One, two, three, and so on. It'll just keep on going. Okay, but now when I click on stop, I'll have to stop it. And if I click on start, I have to resume it. So, what is the only way we can stop an interval, guys? Using clear interval, okay. But if I have to use the clear interval here, I need to get the ID of this interval, now. Yeah, so where, uh, how should I store the ID? Just tell me the exact steps, guys. What should I? How should I get the ID of this interval and pass it to this function? Very good. So I create a variable like this called as interval ID. Okay. And this you can basically give it like this and pass it here. And that is all you need to create a stopwatch. Now, if you see now, if I refresh the app, if I click on start, it'll keep running. When I click on stop, it stops. I click on start again. It resumes from where we left off. And if we click on stop, it will stop. As simple as that. So just see how simple it is to create this app. Just a few lines of code. But if you know the proper approach, I mean, if you don't know the proper approach now, then it'll take a lot of time to create the same thing. By the way, this question exactly was asked in a company called Navi. Navi is a really good company. It's basically used for like mutual funds and loans and all of that. And they are a very good company and they're going to be public soon. 
uh, the salaries are really high and this is the question that they asked uh, during their interview for sd1 role which is what you guys will be applying for theek okay? hai now this is a uh, no i mean see i've explained it simply but if i'd given it to you you guys would have taken some time to understand right but if you understand how set interval works if you understand how the event or how the events work or how use of it work everything will become very simple but is this reset ha to reset me what you can do you have to set you have to okay let's have a reset button as you tell me what should i do with reset it's a very simple thing to do that's it you will set countdown of 0 but if you reset it the interval will keep going on na i'm reset to kar rahe but the interval will keep going on so if you see here i'll start click on reset is zero ho gaya but starting from zero again what we want is we also want to stop now when we reset it the reset kar rahe hum log we have to clear it also so we'll also call we can either do this or the case of is saying we can either call the stop function both are fine okay now what we'll do is uh we'll reset we'll start and we'll click on reset it it stops at zero i click on start i'll click on stop i click on reset it works perfectly okay has any questions before i move ahead cool as one more way we can uh, create this the same solution guys but this is like let's get it of the reset first focus on these two only okay we can do the same thing without using any of the uh, uh, the event handlers we can actually use the use effect here the way we can do it is now think about actually i've done something like this in one of the earlier uh, use effect ka code guys do you remember we did that mouse over thing mouse over maybe if you remember we had the enable disable button yaad hai when you click on enable wo enable tha wo listener when you click on disable wo disable ho gaya tha okay we'll use the same exact principle here what i'll do is i'll create a a new where a new state here called enabled or set enabled so initially i want it to be disabled so i I don't want to start the countdown unless this enabled is true. So when you click on start, I basically want to set enabled of true, very simple. And on stop, I'll do a set enabled of false. Make sense? Abhi tak to kuch bhi nahi. Both simple hai. All I'm saying is when I click on start, I change the enabled ka state to true. When I click on stop, I change it to false. Now we write a use of it here. within the use effect what you do is i have to check the enabled ka state here okay so now i want to basically set up an interval only if the enabled is true If enable is not true, I don't want to set up the interval. Okay, so what I'll do is if we say if it's enabled, then I want to set up this interval, which will run after every thousand milliseconds. I want to call the set countdown. and i want to keep incrementing 
the countdown if state brief state plus one so only if it's enabled do this okay uh, but there's one more thing that is left okay so see now what will happen is when i click on start it definitely starts okay yeah theek hai lekin when i click on stop what should happen the enable will be false okay and uh, <clears throat> the new render enabled will change and hence this effect will run like in enabled is basically uh, uh, not true so we are not entering this but jo whatever the previous interval was in the previous render I have to clear that off now how do we do that yes we'll use return guys this is exactly what we did with that uh, mouse over wala code if you if you look at that exactly same so we'll return the clear interval of this interval here const interval id and pass the interval id here that's it so now if you check we'll start and then click on stop perfectly stops so i click on start again stop stops that's it we can do it with this also okay i'll just explain what exactly is happening so in the first render the countdown is uh, zero and enabled is false uh, we don't enter the use effect yet we come here we create this function we create this function we return this the countdown is zero theek okay? hai now uh, when i click on start ha by the way uh, after the first render do we run this use effect do we run the effect after every first render guys you're getting confused i was just trying to trick you <clears throat> the point is simple whatever effect we have this effect will run after the first render at any cost na no matter what you give here doesn't matter what you give here the effect will always run after the first render never forget that no matter what the second argument is the effect will always run after the first render please don't forget this i mentioned this multiple times right after what i was saying see after the first render the, when when the countdown is zero will this effect run yes it will run we come here but what is enabled this time in the first render what is enabled it is false so we never uh, we never create the interval i mean never even return anything okay so basically nothing is there right now there is no clean up function there is no interval right now but now when i click on the button okay we set enable true enable will become true uh, uh, we don't run the effect yet we create the function we create the function we return the countdown is still zero but now we come here now will this use effect run it will run why why will it run yes so it will run because this enable ka dependency jo hai it went from false to true na pehle false tha now it came true changed because it changed use effect will run this now this time if condition mein jo enabled hai it is true which means that we we register a set interval and we register a clean up also will the clean up run right now no the clean up will not run right now okay very good okay but the interval has begun theek okay? hai when interval begin after every 1000 milliseconds we keep uh, we keep incrementing the count that is done so basically it'll keep happening like when i click on start it'll keep going on because of this one set interval that we have but ask yourself one thing see after every certain after every set count on the component is uh, is re-rendering okay but during these re renders do we run this effect 
very good we don't run it why don't we run it yeah because enable is not changed very good okay vinay you're getting confused i'm not talking about this code i'm asking will the effect itself run the effect will not run because the enable is never changed back to anything else now it is always true see once the enable is true you have set this up okay ye setup hone ke baad ye bar bar component renderer hoga lekin because the enable ka dependency has not changed the effect will not run again right the see when i'm saying effect i mean this function this entire effect is i'm not talking about this thing here i'm talking about this entire thing here okay makes sense guys everybody else abdur i would request you to try it out and there might be a bug and i want you to figure out what will happen with that okay if you are unable to you get back to me i'll tell you but just think about this if you click on start uh, twice you are calling set enable twice the first time you call set enabled the component will re-render lekin next time when you call why will it re-render again the same value na re-render hua to bhi uh, the enable will not change the effect will not run basically nothing happens then zero se start nahi hoga bhai to bol raha hu see when enabled is false initially you call uh, you press this button once which is true okay you uh, you call the same function again we said true again the component might re-render lekin the enabled ka jo dependency hai wo to in the previous one it was true abhi bhi true hai which means that this will never be called again and the effect will not run again it's not really a bug basically it will not cause any bug also just that you click on multiple times doesn't really matter because the enabled ka dependency is not changing so the effect will not run and super c uh, this thing we have it inside because <clears throat> when do we create the interval we create the interval only if this condition is true when do we clear the interval only when this condition is true now we want to we want to register a, an interval and the corresponding clean up only if the enable is true right if enable is not true why do we want to return something from it i don't want to okay ha kesh of render hoga do bar lekin the effect will not be called again because effect always wants the enabled ka dependency to change right agar ye change nahi hoga to ye effect fir se run nahi hoga lekin re render hoga lekin effect run nahi hoga theek hai abdur clear hai na theek hai so i i hope you guys have understood now uh, now what uh, ha huh, so this is the way it basically works and any questions in this one ye khatam ho gaya na for me ha theek hai so i think this is also done we are done with okay now we are really really done with use effect actually me kal hi i started to finish off but since like shubhash had asked me to cover this i did and i hope it was helpful to all of you if it was helpful you guys have to thank le shubhash only cuz he is the one who like requested for that all right theek okay, so this is also done what else i'm thinking should i start a new topic now or not assign uh, what was the ha uh, the github assignment correct have you guys done it awesome uh, you guys want to share your code i mean 
it will be better if you can share the code in i mean do you guys have it on github or something or what where do you have it केशव देन आप रिफाइन करके भेजो मुझे ओके गाइस आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू अपलोड योर कोड ऑन गेटअप एंड सेंड टू मी इट विल बी इजीयर दैट वे अमित वो करेंगे बाद में एक्चुअली यू गाइस कैन डू इट ऑन योर ओन टू डू लिस्ट थिंग्स दे आर वेरी सिंपल नो वी हैव कवर्ड मोस्ट ऑफ व्हाट यू नीड टू नो टू सेल्स बी हैंड करनी है क्या Errors go. I'll not suggest you to handle it right now. It's good if you do, but it's okay if you don't. I want the main functionality to work. I'll tell you one thing, Kesha. See, whenever I give a feature, okay, be it here or be it within your real interview, वो feature को पहले आपको solve करना है, ठीक है? The other things like loading indicators, errors, they can be solved later. हाँ, then you try to give the code to me on GitHub. And guys let me create a quiz okay uh, just give me 2 seconds i have to create a quiz here new quiz okay aaj ka date kya hai 20 last the first two na फर्स्ट जून का आ गया क्या ओके इज नॉट एबल टू रीड योर चैट्स राइट नो बिकॉज आई एम क्रिएटिंग द क्विजेस मी अ फ्यू मिनट्स यू प्लीज I'm done with two questions, guys. There are two more left. Please hold on. and um guys have launched the quiz i request you all to please attempt it
as you're trying right you're giving the answers right in the quiz done okay good so okay, once you're done just let me know guys most of you i'll discuss the answers as well Okay, I see most of you might have been done. So I'll just go through the answers. The first is, uh, what is the purpose of use effect hook in the following code snippet? As you can see, we, uh, what is, I mean, look at what the argument is. The second argument, it is an empty array, which means that it will be called only once on the mount of a component, right? Uh, so what we're doing there is, before we make the fetch call, we are setting the loading as true, and then we make the API call and we set the data. So the answer for that would be C because to fetch the data from an API, I'm set using set data function. That is the answer. The second one is what? So which of the following is the method of the response object that is returned by fetch and can be used to check the status of response? So guys, if you remember, I told you that if you want to check if, uh, I mean, if you want to check if everything is working fine with the API that you've made, I mean, with the call that you've made, you can check the OK property, right? Within the response object. Guys, if you don't mind, can you send me the GitHub links on Slack, please? I am not able to save these things. Just send it on uh, on Slack. Both Keshav and Tamzila. Okay. All right. Okay. So Tamzila went a step ahead and she hosted the app. Also brilliant. Very nice. Looks superb. I'm just looking at your uh, where does share my screen actually? Yeah, so guys, as you can see, she has done a very good job of this. Hmm. Uh, when I when I load the app for the first, see, I'll give you guys one more. Uh, I'll give you guys like one more thing, uh, one more small. Uh, Thing so, 
when you load the app for the first time i want you to automatically show the details of the first person like this mojombo ka details mujhe yahan pe dikhna chahiye even before i click on anybody else okay just try to add that also like abhi uh, not required right now but you can do that as well okay but this looks very good i'll take a look at your code tanzil and let you know uh, or to think of it okay all right so i think guys that's all i have for today uh, i mean the next topic is it's kind of a big topic so I don't want to start it now it's about use red user uske baad we have use context aur to uske baad and these both are the next i think the biggest topics after this everything is uh, will take very short time to finish off theek hai so that's the plan i see you guys tomorrow at 6:30 then because tomorrow is friday ha huh. so look yes please ask me the doubt aap unmute kar sakte ho if you want go ahead sir yes sir am i audible i can hear you yeah go on yeah sir uh, yesterday like uh, like a uh, uh, day before yesterday class so in one of the code uh, you know we were doing the set loading thing and uh, we were doing this uh, we were assigning uh, the task right i mean okay let me just just a minute ha uh-huh, ha sure yeah we were fetching uh, like uh, from the api right like we were uh, we were doing if uh, response dot okay if it's if it's not okay then it gonna go to the you know uh, to the error and it will print the things and all the mm-hmm. all the things that right so right. first yeah so before that uh, you told that you know if uh, response dot okay is false right so mm-hmm. it gonna uh, throw new error and it will go on a catch right Okay. and if it's true then it will directly uh, do the code like that cons data is supposed to await response on json right correct correct and after that we were doing uh, set loading false and then we were doing set users data correct hmm hmm yeah but after that you introduce us the finally keyword hmm. right hmm. so in finally what we were doing that if response dot okay, okay is correct hmm. then we were implementing the code that cons data and set users data and then after that it was coming to the finally and set loading false right hmm. so my doubt is that like in uh, like before we were uh, first you know um, doing set loading false and then going set users data but huh? in finally we were doing set loading uh, set you uh, like in finally we are doing uh, what a uh, set users data we are printing like we are we are doing first and in finally we are doing the set loading false later on so how hmm. i mean first what, what i think that first uh, it has to be false right i mean the set loading has to be false mm-hmm. then it has to be set uh, user data right but here we doing it later on so how it's correct basically i'll tell you one thing your understanding is a little wrong here see i told you about the state batching the update batching now sort of so yeah if you have two set state, if you have two separate set state calls which are uh-huh. changing two separate things uh, okay. what would react do Uh, uh, would react you know render the first thing first and then second thing second or would react just batch all of them together and render yeah. everything at once yeah like my second doubt like not exactly a doubt or just confusion uh-huh. so i just need to clear that mm-hmm. so you told us that you know when uh, the like like let's say we have three different set states right mm-hmm. doing the different task mm-hmm. so then in this case uh, react will you know schedule the update for all of these three uh-huh. and render it only once right correct doesn't matter if they uh, are within the same function or uh, triggered by the same function or like that stuff right it just schedule the uh, update and doing the render for the ones if and you if, have it within one function mm-hmm. and if there is no asynchronous stuff going on mm-hmm. even if you have like 3 5 or 10 set state updates all doing different state updates everything will be batched together yeah and react will update only once okay and mm-hmm. if they doing the same thing then it going to take the last one right correct 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 okay then okay sir yeah i was confused now it's clear now basically yeah. if you think about batching right mm-hmm. doesn't matter if i'm doing set users data first and loading next or the opposite doesn't really matter react mm-hmm. will any batch them together okay they both are two separate calls so react will update i mean uh, react ek hi render mein mm-hmm. it will uh, do both the set users and loading at the same exact time yes sir okay so doesn't really matter yes yeah, okay i got it okay thank you sir no problem sir uh, good doubt though theek hai okay guys then good night guys i'll see you tomorrow take care bye bye